Good morning, boss. It's so good to be with you guys again at the eCampus platform. Can I say platform? Look at that. Platform. So good to be with you guys. How many know that we're going to let the praises of the Lord rise this morning? Come on, stand to your feet. God has been so amazing to you. Come on, just wave your hands like this. Hallelujah.
Somebody worship right there. Let the praise rise in your life, Mister. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, we're not done worshiping. Let's talk about our God. Something happens when you talk about your God. Your chest begins to stick out because you know that you serve the God of the universe. He's the one that created the entire world in six days. So let's just testify a little bit. Come on. Say, water you turned into wine. Say, water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one. No one like you. No one like you. Hey, say. Into the darkness you shine. Say our God. our God is greater. Come on, let's talk about it. Our God is stronger. Our God is higher than any other. Our God is healer. Our God is healer. Awesome and powerful. Testify. Water you turn, say. Come on, say our God. Our God is greater. Our God, our God is stronger. Say. God, you are higher than any. Come on, everybody say our God. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Power our God. Our God. Our God. One more time, say our God is greater. Our God is greater. He's bigger than our your problems. Say 
Say one more time. If my God is for sin, if my God is for then who could ever stop? If your God goes before you, He's made everything alright. And if our God is for us, who could ever stop us? Yeah, that's really good news. And if our God is with us, then what could stand? And if our God, and He is. Yes, he is. He's before you. And if our God is with us, then what could stand? And if our God, come on, say it right there. Nothing can stop you. Then what could stand? Come on, somebody rejoice right there at that good news. What can stand? Somebody say, our God say, our God is greater, our God is stronger, our God is our God is our God is healer, awesome, awesome and power, our God, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger. Good morning, boss. So glad to be with you guys again. Um, so appreciate you tuning in each and every week. Uh, it is such a privilege to be able to share with you guys out of the scriptures I heard from so many of you uh, that God has really been blessing and doing some amazing things over these last couple of months. And so we pray that God continues to do what he desires to do. So we are still looking at Ephesians chapter six, and we talked about um, that our adversary is being part of an organized structure, right, of ungodly beings who seek to systemically bring about our destruction, okay? And we said that this plan is carried out often through one people, we talked about it a few weeks ago, um, those that, you know, are the characters, not the actors, uh, two situations, we talked about cycles, that we go through. That was last week. Today, you guys, I want to pick up about how ways this systemic plan is brought about to destroy us. Um, and I want to look at some internal stuff, all right? Last couple of weeks, we've been dealing with external stuff, situations in life and others. But today, I want to look at some internal stuff. So um, let's pray. Father, we bless you. God, we glorify you. We thank you for this moment, this time, this space that we find ourselves in. We pray now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, that you would preach, you would teach, that you would give us ears to hear and eyes to see what you say and what you show your church. God, we thank you that you have authority over every spirit, over every ruler, over every uh, entity, for you are creator of all. And we know that it is your desire that we be free. So, Father, in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, wrestle what we can't handle and strengthen us to handle what we can, that we may move forward on this day to see progress in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. People are used, not the actors, but the characters. Situations, cycles are used. We talked about the tainting of the seas in our life, right? And these rivers that go back and forth. But also what is used by the enemy in a systemic, intentional way 
are internal failures. Internal failures. Write that down. Internal failures. These are failures of the emotion, the mind, and the will. Failures of the emotion, the mind, and the will. The enemy uses not just people, and again, not the actors, but the characters, not just situations or cycles in our life, things that we consistently go through and experience, but he also intentionally uses for planned purposes, internal failures of the emotion, the mind, and the will. When we talk about our emotions or internal failures, internal failures of the emotions, turn to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. It says this, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. The emotions you all um, are impacted and become internal failures because of the, and write this down, the calculated manipulation, two big words, calculated manipulation of the people and the situations we've already talked about. It's the calculated manipulation of people and situations to leave deep emotional wounds that cause isolation. The enemy calculates how to manipulate people and cycles in order to create deep emotional wounds that cause isolation. And the reason he wants you and I to be isolated is because isolated, we are weaker. Understand this is one of the plain and simple reasons why God encourages the church to gather together. Forsake not the assembling yourselves together uh, as the days get long, as the days get darker, as the, as the times grow darker, uh, because it is in the gathering together that we encourage one another to good works. We encourage one another to stay strong in the fight. We encourage, support, lift up one another. Uh, isolation, you all, puts you and I in a place where torment can set in. Uh, I, I watch a lot of stuff on like YouTube and, and one of the videos I was watching not too long ago talked about um, uh, some extreme methods of torture in history, some extreme methods of torture in history. Can't remember the name of this particular uh, method, uh, Pastor Margo, but it, it is like a, a French word. I can't remember what the word is. But basically what you have is you have a, a, a building, a facility or whatever, and uh, under it, there's like a basement. Under the basement, there's like a cellar. Under the cellar, there's like a funnel-like uh, uh, tube that, that, that kind of comes down like this, and then it goes into a straight like cylinder, right? At the bottom of that cylinder, they typically place a small hole probably sometimes smaller than two by two feet in which they drop a prisoner. And the amazing, insane thing about this technique that is so torturous is that it is designed that once you put the prisoner in this place, it is designed so they are forgotten. Now, you would think, because in my mind, typically, you know, I'm thinking torture and a lot of things I watch is, you know, all kind of gory stuff. I, you know, I know some of y'all ain't going to go into it. It's, oh, it's just okay. Uh, it, you know, all kind of stuff that inflicts pain and puts us in these places where we feel things. But the most insane level of torture really is one in which you and I are isolated to the degree by which we are forgotten. 
And even if we don't, we aren't actually forgotten, we feel forgotten. One of the things they said it was so traumatizing about this particular type of torture method in, the, in terms of how, it, how isolated you would be is that there were times they would drop people into these places and the only thing in that space with them were the bones of the last prisoner understand the goal of the enemy is to drop you and I emotionally into places where we feel like we have nothing but dead things around us where we feel like there is no one to reach out to nobody to talk to it and and many times when you get isolated um, you feel as though even though there are people around you're by yourself even though there are people that say hey I want to check on you I want to you you don't feel comfortable enough to share and to be open. This is one of the tricks of the enemy that to attack the church and divide the church it is to create division and, and distrust among each other. So that if no one trusts each other, then no one's going to open up and say when they're hurting. Nobody's gonna open up and say when they're struggling. Um, nobody's gonna open up and say why they're hurting. Um, we become very guarded. We become very protective. We become very covered. And so we cower back into these places, almost into obscurity, where we're so isolated we don't share. We're so isolated that we have no uh, covering. We don't, we don't have anybody we can articulate, this is how I'm feeling to, without feeling like we will be judged. And so that is one of the things the enemy does with, these, with people and situations, is to break us into such a place that we feel isolated and alone, that we do not come into a place where we are in agreement with anyone else. This is key because the Bible speaks so much about agreement and the power that is there when there's agreement between the saints, when there's agreement one with another, when two or three are gathered in my name, Jesus said, I'll be in the midst. Anything you ask when two or three of you are gathered together, I will do that. It, it, it is this power that comes when we are in agreement one with another. And so isolation adds to his plan by intentionally causing division. All right. So he wants to create deep emotional wounds that will cause us to isolate ourselves. That's the emotions, internal failures of the emotions. Now, internal failure of the mind, internal failure of the mind. Calculated manipulation of people and situations, hope y'all writing this down, as well as, now notice, this is, this is a layer, he, it's, it's an adding on effect, there's a building a house, there's a foundation that keeps getting built, all right? As well as the emotional wounds, these all come to now add or manifest extreme mental distress. Calculated manipulation of people and situations, cycles, as well as the emotional wounds that cause us to be isolated. It is now in this isolated place with these emotional wounds after having suffering at the hands of cycles and people that we are now mentally distressed. Not just mentally distressed, but extremely mentally distressed. Um, two principal Greek words for the mind translate in the New Testament as new and for something that I can't pronounce. I ain't gonna pretend to pronounce it, but just know it's there, Google it. Um, actually, don't Google it, because Google give you all kind of crazy stuff. Point is, it's two words, right? Um, these two words, one, one of them, signifies the capacity of mental perception. It speaks to the mind as the source of thinking and understanding, okay? Um, it, it's, it refers to the results of thinking and understanding as attitude, thought, or opinion, all right? Uh, many of these references that I just showed you about uh, come out of Paul's letters, and it speaks to that human faculty that's bound up in this space, right? Um, the other one signifies an understanding or the setting of your mind, the settling of your mind, right? So one is the source of our thinking, it is our attitude, our actions, or how we respond to those actions. It's our perception of things. The other is our mind being settled or set on something. When the enemy is using these things to attack us, he is attacking, watch this, both how we think 
and what our mind settles on. So that's two things there, our mind's processing ability and our mind's concluding ability. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Our mind's processing ability and our mind's concluding ability. So you process something and then you'd come to a conclusion, all right? If the enemy can taint the processing and then taint the concluding, then he has just unsettled or caused extreme duress and distress in our mind. So this is where many of us become focused in the processing on our thoughts, our thinking. He, he, the, the anguish in the emotions, the things people have done, the cycles we've been through. Have you ever been in a place where something someone did or said keeps replaying in your head? It keeps, you just keep thinking about it. You can't shake it. It's just right there over and over. It's like a song on repeat that you don't like. It's just, and you can't turn it off. It is, it is, it is the processing part that has been tainted. That thinking, those thoughts, those things cause mental anguish, right? When that whole processing piece has continued, to be tainted, has continued to be polluted, has continued to wear on us. We keep recycling things over and over and we keep thinking over the same things over and over and over, watch this. And then we come to conclusions. Somewhere in the, the sane part of our mind, we know something is off. Um, you, you ever, um, I'll give you an example, <laughs> give you a great example. Uh, uh, we, we, we were doing some recording recently and it's myself and Pastor Margo and some others in the sanctuary and Pastor Margo thought some light skinned bug uh, came from nowhere and attacked her. She, she jumped, she's like, uh, and we're like, what's wrong with you? She's like, some light skinned bug. I don't know why the bug had to be light skinned. I, I just don't believe in that kind of, you know, stuff like that. I think, you know, we all, all bugs matter, you know? And so, and so, uh, so she's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, this is, you know, and couldn't see it on the way. Went, just, she just, but nobody could see the bug. Pastor Margo couldn't see the bug. Nobody saw the bug. Uh, so you have, watch this, confusion sets in because we look at her like she crazy. And because we look at her long enough like she crazy, start looking at herself like maybe I am crazy because she can't find the bug too. She's like, no, I'm telling you guys, there was a light skinned bug that came down and tried to kill me. And nobody can see this bug. And so she's looking. And so watch this. That's where confusion sets in. Now, I said that real jokingly, gave you a really joking example. However, that is the reality of it. It's confusion sets in when what we have felt does not match what we conclude. Because she begins and we begin to conclude that clearly there is no bug because we see no bug. But she knows what she felt. And she knows what she saw, even if it was just for a second, she saw it, it was there. But now confusion sets in because the mind is settling on a conclusion that does not match the experience it remembers. This is where the torture of the enemy comes in because we wrestle you all, watch this, a lot of times, especially as Christians, because we are not taught in the deeper things of scripture, but we live on surface level. And what we are taught on surface level does not match what we have experienced. So we are told to conclude something that does not match what we have felt, what we have seen, and what we have gone through. And that's why it's important to dig deeper into scriptures because the scripture tells us there are deeper matters, but that God goes deeper and has the authority over everything you and I have experienced. It is, it is the mind trying to figure figure out what's real and what's counterfeit. Especially when you, you, you have gone through trauma after trauma after trauma and now you're in a place in life where things seem okay and your mind can't resolve the present you with the you that has gone through all of the hell and everybody's telling you you should be all right. You look at yourself and you feel like you should be all right, but something in you is off and you feel it's off. You know it's off. You know something just quite ain't right. It's because the mind, watch this, and the mind gets set on trying to find what is wrong. 
It's like trying to find a splinter in your skin and you only know it's somewhere in your hand, but you can't see it. And you end up picking at the skin of your hand over and over, trying to find a splinter. Watch this, that you can't see because it's so deeply embedded under the skin that you can feel it but can't see it. And many of you are living in places where your mind is tormented because you feel things you can't see. You feel things you can't articulate. You feel things that you can't really put words to. And I know early, you know, I said, uh, you know, we should share. And then he's like, Pastor, I would love to share, but I, I don't even know what I would say because I don't know what's bothering me. That, that is the mental anguish that the enemy tries to pounce on and use. It causes confusion, watch this, and depression. Now, understand your depression is manifest. Write this down, keep it, whatever. Depression is manifest in our psychology and our biology. It is not a feeling, all right? So we have to be careful not to mislabel it as such or we di diminish its true impact. We got to keep telling people not, you can't keep telling people that are depressed to snap out of it. Clearly, if they could snap out of it, they would snap out of it. And, and so we have to be mindful of that. But that is the plan of the enemy, that that anguish and the thoughts lead to confusion. That confusion begins to lead to depression. Um, all mental health issues, listen, even those that folk are born with are planned parts of the enemy's plot. It's a very preacher way of saying that. They're all planned parts of the enemy's plot. Um, in an article, July 18th, 2019, an article in Science Magazine, University of Zurich physician and neuroscience, Ali Jawahad, says this. He describes a study he conducted on orphans. And he found um, that even though the orphans in the study received the best possible care, he said this, these children experience symptoms similar to PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, including anxiety and depression. Therefore, he concluded that emotional trauma of separation from their parents also triggers subtle biological alterations, changes so lasting that the children might even pass them on to their offspring. Let me, let me say that again. Uh, this neuroscientist, physician, Ali Jawahad, concluded that emotional trauma of se separation, we talked about the emotional pain, of separation, situations, isolation, from their parents also triggers subtle biological alterations. The body changes to the mental stress. And the changes can be so lasting, you all, that the children might even pass them on to their offspring. Trauma can be passed down to your kids. This is when the Bible talks about the sins of the father being visited upon the children into the next generation, next generation. It's not so much God cursing every generation for something. I know some believe that. I, I, I ain't trying to get into all them arguments. But there's a very, God is very scientific. Science does not disagree with God. Science agrees with him because science is him. So it proves that when God is talking about these sins being passed down, it is not simply a matter of God saying all your kids in trouble. It is that the trauma inflicted on daddy can be so great that the body adjusts to it. And when the body adjusts to it, it is then transferred to their children and their children's children so that their children come into life with trauma in their bones, with anxiety in their brains. They don't understand why, they don't get it, they don't know where it's come from, but you start seeing in the young children, they start acting and responding and acting out is not immediately because they need uh, Ritalin or they, they're, they, they ADHD. Or, it's because something's been passed down. And my point in saying all that to us, you all, is that there are things that the enemy is trying to take you through to emotionally traumatize you and lead you to a place of mental anguish that leads to confusion and depression, so much so that it's changing your biology so that it passes through to the next generation. He is trying to destroy us not just with people not just with situations but also from the inside out 
emotions, mental, the mind, but also the will. The will, you all, is what happens when we decide to do something, all right? So mind, how we think, process, our processing and our conclusion. Emotions, how we feel, all those things, anger and, and laughter and joy, all that. The will is what we do, what we desire to do and we carry out. Watch this. Calculated manipulation of people and situations plus the emotional wounds, plus the warping of the mind in consciousness and biology lead, all, watch this, all of it leads to a change in behaviors. All of this <laughs> is to get you to do something. Remember that story I told y'all a few weeks ago, the gay example, the young lady who had the little anger on the side of her and the enemy kept doing stuff and plotting stuff to eventually at 29, she exploded and she, you know, killed somebody and it prevents her from getting to, it's all to get you and I to do something. Why, why, why? Here it is, and we're not gonna be long today at all. Listen, behaviors are the open doors that restart the cycle of a person being used to cause the same trauma in another. Let me say that again. Remember, long time ago, a few weeks ago, I said he uses people, broken people, to break you. Well, now you've become the broken person who breaks someone else. Everything is to get you to cuss that person out. Everything is to get you to steal that, to harm that person, to manipulate that person. Everything is to get you to lie. Everything is to get you to be deceitful. Everything is to get you to sleep with this person and sleep with that person. Everything is to get you to do something because the doing is the door that opens us up to create the same trauma in another that has been put on us. Which eventually leads that person to unhealthy emotions, mental processes, mental conclusions, depressions, and then behaviors, which causes cycles. This is not a haphazard scheme, y'all. This is not some random thing that the devil is just randomly doing stuff and stuff just happens to you. This is not, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. This is not karma. Stop making up names and using these spiritual <laughs> idioms and sayings. To, no, it is sowing and reaping. Yeah, I know, well, that's the same thing as karma. No, 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 no. Karma is some mystical idea that the universe is boomeranging stuff around and people just get what they deserve. No, because nothing you and I have done, watch this, has earned the foolishness of the devil nor the goodness of God. Mm. We have not done enough to earn either. Now, we have earned separation from him. But all this extra the devil and them doing that, we ain't earned, we ain't earned all that. And all, all the goodness of God, we've not earned that. So there is no karmatic, uh, uh, you know, boomerang that is, that is coming back to us as we have earned things. It is either the hand of God or the manipulation of ungodly beings behind the scenes causing things in your life to be a certain way. It's one or the other, but watch this, both need our participation. And that's in our behaviors, that's in our thoughts. That's in how we live out. Everything you've been experiencing over the course of your life, a lot of that stuff, y'all, just ain't normal. Boss, I love you. It's a short one today for a reason, because I want you to spend, last week we prayed together. Today, you're going to spend some time in prayer. And right now, for, for a little bit of space, we're going to have some music playing and 
this is gentle something. I want you to intentionally stay here in this space for just a few more minutes. And as the music plays, as, as Kevin or somebody will have somebody, somebody gonna sing, minister for a, a, a song, I want you to just let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Because this is the moment God heals your mental anguish. Well, Pastor, you know, you pray last week, why don't you pray this week? Because the best way for God to set a mind free is silence in him. Be still and know. Let, let him wrestle with those thoughts today. Let him wrestle with the conclusions you've drawn. Paul said, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And a renewed mind is able to discern the perfect will of God. I believe that by the time you finish praying today, this is this for the real saved people because you really got to be disciplined to do this. You got to be disciplined to sit there and pray and to read. And to, and by the time you finish, God's going to have done something. And I don't mean in a vague, you know, kind of, oh, yeah, preachers always say, no, I mean, God's going to have begun to undo some of that mental anguish. He's gonna be gone to have worked out some of those threads that have caused confusion and depression in your life. For some of you, you're gonna experience total, complete deliverance of your mind like this. For some of you, God's gonna start a process that you've been unable to start. But you have to begin to do the work to say, God, I'm about to sit in your presence and be silent before you and let you speak. Boss, I love you. Those of you that uh, give, make sure you give. Those of you that don't have, don't stress over it. We love you, God. Give seed to the sower. If you need prayer for anything, hit us up and let us know. But at this time, we're going to have uh, a moment of uh, music and worship played and or sang. Uh, and then you are going to be released. And we're going to say goodbye on the screen or something like that so that we uh, know that you can kind of go. But you can continue in prayer after that. Uh, but we do want your attention to try to stay in this space for a second to talk to the Lord. We love you so much. Praying for you that God would do amazing things for you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Let's pray.